Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a lovely day today. And you know what day it is. It is Wickedly Weird Wednesday. I'm so excited for today's video. So if you're new around here, on Wickedly Weird Wednesdays, I read you guys ghost stories from either Reddit or ghost stories that have been sent in by you guys, either on my Instagram, Twitter, in the comments, however you wanna leave it. All of my links to my socials are always in the description. Um, but I'll put like my Instagram at on the screen somewhere as well, so it's a bit easier for you. Uh, but yeah, I'm so excited to get into this video, so let's get straight on into it. I almost forgot just before we get into the video, please consider subscribing if you are new around here because I'm really trying to hit 700 subscribers before my birthday and we're getting so, so close. And yeah, if you're not new around here and you want to help, leave a like because it really, really does help me out and leave a comment as well because that also really, really helps with the algorithm. And yeah, now we'll get into the video. <laughs> okay, so the first story is called Haunted by Cloaked Shadow Figure oh dear <laughs> I've always had a bit of a what I call spooky meter I don't really have any better word for it than that there have been times I will walk into a room and get a very unsettling feeling and generally I seem to visually perceive it differently things will generally appear darker and dimmer than they ought to as if light is swallowed as a bit of an example of my spooky radar going off even in an exterior environment i'm from australia and a couple years back traveled to Cairns. sorry if i'm saying that wrong for work and i met up with some people who worked for the same organization in a branch in the far north queensland i'm struggling to read today jeez one of these whom i spent the most time with happened to be aboriginal and in our time off she took me to a few touristy places one of these went by a rock pool and I instantly got a horrible feeling. Despite the fact that it was a sunny day, the sunlight appeared dull, dim and grey. Kind of like that scene from Lord of the Rings when Frodo and Sam are traversing the mountains at the start of the two towers. I remembered instinctively, I turned to her and said, this place is bad. Her eyes lit up and she immediately began telling me that this was an area that had a lot of drownings and that there is an old Aboriginal legend about a man and a female from two separate tribes who fell in love, which for reasons I'm not qualified to speak on, taboo. I'm probably going to butcher the story, so I do apologise, but in short, they were both punished and killed by the rock pool. And it's said that her angry spirit remains there and holds anyone that comes there under the water oh my god there's actually a super scary story about one case in which the local news took a photo of the spot after a man drowned there and published it in the newspaper in the photo the rocks form the shape of the man of the man's face which is super creepy i tried to hunt down the photo but i can't find it for the life of me so you all have to just take my word for it or do your own research. As far as the drownings go, there is actually a scientific reason for this that I'm not familiar with that you can search up if you like. However, Aboriginals have a rich storytelling history. I think there's actually some truth in a lot of these and I know people on here like Wendigo stories. Some indigenous tribes have a version of the Wendigo, although I'm not familiar with it. Sorry for the long ass foreplay, <laughs> it's time for the story. In my childhood home, which was built by my parents, so not a case of someone who died there and haunts it, a fact my unbelieving father regularly tells me, even to this day, when my siblings and I repeat this story. We had a spare room, which always gave me the creeps towards the back of the house, at the end of a long hallway. I should also mention we lived on a farm fairly far from town and on it I've had a number of creepy experiences but none like the ones I'm going to mention. I should also say my father has lived in the house since his mid-twenties along with a few housemates one of which used to claim that the house was haunted. The only story my non-believing father told me that he couldn't explain was that the stereo system which was unplugged began blasting music in the early hours of the morning firstly when i was extremely young 
I was awoken in my room by something I thought to be my father. I don't remember seeing him or what he looked like, only that I was lifted from my cot and put on the floor. He had large feet and our hallway had a wooden floor. I remember crawling after him and following the footprints from where his bare foot made the floor until we got to the kitchen. Let's have ice cream, he said to me. He lifted me in the freezer, which was way, way too high for me to reach, and I grabbed the ice cream and began to eat it. It was dark at the time, and when the sun began to rise, my dad came back downstairs. I remember him asking me what I was doing, taking the ice cream off me. I told him I was eating the ice cream and that he had taken me to get it. He had absolutely no idea what I was talking about and said he absolutely did not wake me up in the middle of the night to get me some ice cream. When I've brought it up to him now as a young adult, he says he remembers it and claims I must have climbed in. There is absolutely no way I could have climbed in. When I was about four or five, I recall playing with my brother and two sisters at the end of the hallway. We saw a black hooded figure that was blurry and smoky. It ran past us at a ridiculous speed and went into the spare room slamming the door behind it. We all screamed and carried on and then I guess forgot about it and put it down to us being young and overly imaginative. Despite of this, however, we never entered that room and we didn't have to and would always close the door and slash or turn the lights on in there only to find the door open and the light off whenever we went back. Couldn't have been our parents. My brother, who was two years older than me and I had shared a room for our entire childhood. When my brother transitioned to high school, my parents thought it was best we had our own rooms as he was staying up later than I and I'm sure puberty also played a role. I was moved into the spare room, which as I'd gotten older, sort of gotten over my fear of it. It was a simple room, fairly small and square. My bed was situated in the bottom left hand corner of the room. A desk ran along the wall beside it toward the door in which I mostly used for building Lego. The far left corner had a big wooden wardrobe, which I never used. A window sat on the wall facing the door that never seemed to let enough light in, despite its size and the entire right-hand side of the room was just a giant cupboard with sliding doors. My walls were also covered in posters, which is important to note. I spent anywhere between two weeks to a month in hell when I first moved into that room. From the get-go, my spooky radar went pretty haywire and I didn't really like being in there. I will do my best to recount the incidents that I remember, although there are a lot. For reference, I spent every night of the initial month in there, unable to sleep and battling all manner of strange occurrences. There are probably like 21 nights worth of scary incidents, most that I can't recall and probably deliberately tried to forget. The first occurrences were fairly tame. I used to have a fan running most nights that created a pretty heavy white noise. Because of it, I can't really confirm whether what I heard was real or not, but initially I thought I could hear whispering throughout the night. It used to put me super on edge, especially since it was just faint enough that I didn't know if I was crazy or not. So already my sleep started getting pretty bad. Then things started to get worse. The floor was carpeted and I would begin to hear that soft sort of crumpling sound you hear when someone's walking on it. The footsteps were slow and would always come towards me and would come from the wardrobe in the corner of the room. Strangely, most things would occur from the wardrobe in the corner. I remember I initially had a lamp in my room, which I would turn on as soon as I heard anything. But after way too short of a time, the bulb blew and the lamp never worked again, no matter how many bulbs we put in it. I transitioned to using my iPod for a light with one of those torch apps and I always kept this at my side. It became necessary for me to sleep facing the doors as every time I did finally get to sleep, if I was facing the wall, I would get a horrific nightmare. Sometimes I would fall asleep facing the door, have a nightmare and wake up to find that I had rolled over in the night. I began to wake up periodically in the night to a strange noise. Things would move around or fall off the shelves. This was actually trackable and began to truly confirm my strong suspicion that something was amiss. I'm not Christian, but I am open-minded. And despite my lack of belief, God plays a part in this story. 
Strangely, I began to wake at 3 a.m., which is known as the witching hour. I didn't know this until I consulted the resident spooky expert of my school, who we will call James for the sake of the story. James told me that my room was likely haunted and that I should try and record it through the night. Oh no. <laughs> so I set up my iPod to charge overnight and I used a voice recorder app to record the sounds during the night. I tried video first, however my phone would overheat and die too quickly and probably wouldn't have had enough storage space for an 8 hour recording anyway. But strangely the recordings would always stop at random intervals as though someone had pressed it to stop. Then things got worse again. One day I felt as though my duvet was moving. I didn't think much of it because it used to fall down the side of my bed because of the weight sometimes. This time it felt as though it was rising and before I could really clock it, a hand touched my back. It wasn't freezing cold like the movies, nor did it burn me or anything like that. It just felt like a human hand planted itself on my back. I recoiled naturally and probably spent the rest of the night with the light on. From then on, I used to tuck my blanket underneath my body, which was a habit I maintained until I was like 18 because of this experience. Another time, my blanket felt like it was falling down the bed again, so I grabbed it and pulled it back, only it didn't move. Initially, I thought it was stuck on something, but no matter how hard I pulled, it didn't move. That's when the blanket was pulled back. I remember my heart was racing. I essentially played tug of war with a ghost for 30 seconds before it let up and I flew backwards with the blanket, having been pulling on it with all my strength and going back and forth prior. After that, I remember things got borderline awful and I basically didn't sleep ever. I spoke to James about it and how things seemed to be getting worse and I was outright terrified now. And he speculated that it may be feeding on my fear and growing stronger with each passing night. This notion obviously horrified me and I asked him what I could do. He actually suggested I pray, funnily enough, and told me a few things I could say that had worked in some horrors that he had seen. I don't remember the order of operations, but what I do know is that one night things were especially bad. Whispering, objects moving around and falling, strange noises and footsteps. I couldn't take it anymore and so I prayed. I prayed that I'd be given the strength and courage to face the thing and I prayed that whatever was in my room go back to wherever it came from. I recall this next part perfectly and will likely never forget it. I sat up in my bed and yelled, in the name of God, I banish you from my room. I remember raising my fist as though I was prepared to fight with my bare hands. I think my courage was fueled by the belief that God was on my side. From the corner of my room rushed the same hooded black figure I saw in my childhood. It was like a misty blur. It moved so quickly that it generated a wind that swept across the room as it ran, blowing off all my posters and knocking over the Lego on my desk, which smashed on the floor. It rushed to the exit of my room and stopped in the doorway. I remember it turned and looked at me for only about half a second. But what gives me the chills was at the speed it moved in its time, I dare say it stayed for a lot longer than that. I remember I fell asleep after that in pure exhaustion. I slept like a baby. When I woke up, I thought I had imagined or dreamt the whole thing. But when I looked around my room, the room was trashed so badly that I remember my dad came in and told me it looked like a hurricane had passed through it. He didn't believe me when I told him what had happened. I think he believed that I believed it, but some people, I guess, just never have had an experience and therefore refuse to buy into it whenever someone else tells them a story. That's fair enough, I suppose. Nothing happened after that. I never forgot about what had occurred and it even made me a devout Christian for like 12 months. The only thing that occurred involving whatever the thing was came when I was about 15. I was working out one day while my sister was playing on the computer. I remember she looked over my shoulder and screamed. She said she saw a black hooded figure behind me. What? the hell is going on 
that it was blurry and hazel like it was made of smoke and that it was watching me and that it had run away when she screamed oh my god i literally just got chills by the way that was the last i ever seen it it's funny though because a lot of people apparently have seen the cloaked figure during sleep paralysis but i know i was awake when i saw it and if you can't believe me then believe my siblings how scary is that story like i wonder what would have happened if you'd have not like i told it it was banished from your room like it just seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse and i wonder what it was and i think it's crazy that you're like dad like believed that you believed it was true but like obviously didn't like believe in it if that makes sense that is the scariest thing i think i've ever heard i feel like i don't know what i would do i wouldn't sleep in that room i can tell you that for free i genuinely wouldn't be in that room also is it not freaky that it's like still like around you even though like isn't haunting you like doing stuff anymore but other people have still seen it what the hell that is so scary okay so this next story is actually from one of you guys and i'm so excited to read this one i've already read the story but it's a spooky dooky one so let's get into it so they said hey i've just watched one of your weird wednesday videos on youtube so many weird things have happened to me over the years i don't drive i can just not legally yet so i've always got the bus to work i used to see a man in a striped t-shirt just standing but it would disappear if you blinked the face every time i've seen it is blurred i then started seeing him in work until one day he disappeared I didn't see him at home, only on the bus and at my work. After I stopped seeing the blurred face man in the striped t-shirt, I started seeing another man, but he was in a black suit with a white shirt. Again, his face was blurred. I seen him mostly at work and occasionally in random places. I'm aware of shadow figures often too. A few years ago, I went to St. Andrews in Fife and I woke up and seen what i thought was my fiance standing under the air conditioning unit and i wondered why he was stood there as it wasn't working i shut my eyes and opened them to see the shadow at the window again i wondered why he would be at the window that wouldn't open and his motorbike was parked at the other side of the hotel i heard a noise and rolled over and my fiance was in the bed and the shadow had disappeared i would have screamed what the heck like and why are like things following you around like i think the one on like the bus and like at work is like it's so spooky i said i wonder if there's something in her home that maybe is protecting her that she just doesn't even know about but how spooky, like, what would you do if you just saw something blinked and it was gone? And I'm not going to lie, I kind of think I know what they mean by seeing shadow figures because I haven't in a while, but I definitely have had experiences where I've seen something look back and it's not there. But then I'll, like, look again and you can kind of see something and you're like, what the hell yeah freaky so freaky and the one in the hotel room mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. i i don't know what i would do i genuinely don't know what i would do <laughs> i'm just quickly gonna finish off the rest of my makeup and then i'll be back and we'll read one more story so this story is called i saw a ghost and it tried to touch me let me set the scene it's 2012 and i'm living in a house that's only a couple years old it's late, past 8pm, and I decided to go upstairs to my bedroom. My little brother's bedroom is across the hall from mine with his bedroom light on. Both our bedroom doors are open and my bedroom is pitch black. I was just minding my own business, wanting to listen to my MP3 player on my bed in the dark, looking up at the ceiling fan. But before I walked into my bedroom, I see a hooded, cloaked figure. No feet no legs or arms or hands visible it didn't even have a face well i couldn't see a face 
it was just a cloaked figure and it looked kind of transparent and it appeared to be floating as if a slight breeze was blowing but the air was completely still. It disappears when I'm aware of its presence but when I go to lay down on my bed in the corner of my eye I see a dead looking bony hand creep up to me and try to touch me. I sit up real quick and look at my open bedroom door because I think my little brother is just messing with me but to my surprise nobody was standing there. This story is 100% true and for a fact it did happen oh my god what would have happened if it actually touched you no oh, that's so freaky okay i think i'm gonna read one more because that one was really really short this one is called the warnings oh dear <laughs> Due to the nature of my job, I will be changing the names of everyone involved and slash or affected by one of the most terrifying nights I've ever had. The things I'm about to share actually happened to me one night whilst at work. I am what's known as a personal care attendant or direct support worker. I work one-to-one -one with a disabled client. My client at the time was around 29 years old and in a freak accident three years prior. He was accidentally shot in the neck, wow, by a stray bullet when he was sitting outside of his grandparents' porch. Oh my God. Leaving him quadriplegic. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. I have worked for him for many years. He lived in my cousin's home with his four daughters at the time. I worked from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. while my cousin was at work. I do everything my client is unable to do, like housework, to cook in, to daily tasks he needs help with, as well as taking care of his four kids. After I put all the kids to bed and got Nate settled for the night, I went through the house and made sure all the lights were turned off and all the doors were locked. They had a security system as well, but for some reason I forgot to arm it at the time. It was about 10 o'clock at night when I went to my cousin's bedroom to watch a movie on my laptop before going to sleep. About an hour into the movie, I headed to the kitchen for something to drink. It was dark, but I am used to the layout and didn't bother turning the lights on. When I heard a sound coming from the front door, I didn't immediately recognise. It was the doorknob rattling. I have experienced a lot of paranormal activity over the years in this house and I peeked out to see if anyone was at the door and I saw no one. So I assumed it was just that. I checked all the doors and windows and made sure everyone was okay and went back to the bedroom to finish my movie. After about 10 minutes, my laptop started acting up. It froze and was making a really strange high-pitched noise I'd never heard before. I restarted it and it did it again. I shrugged it off and decided I was getting tired anyway and thought about going to bed. I started to lie down when I heard footsteps in the hallway heading in the direction of the kids room and the bedroom I was in. So I got up and flipped the whole light on and peeked out the door into the hallway. No one. But again, I walked through the house checking on everybody, making sure everything was locked up. I started feeling very, very anxious at this point and I knew I wouldn't be able to sleep now so I turned the TV on and the volume down so it didn't disturb anyone when I heard a very familiar voice say my name. It sounded exactly like my dad except my dad passed away nearly 10 years prior to this. I sat up and looked around the room. Again, no one. Now I'm thinking I'm not going to sleep at all. The activity was kicking up more than usual, so I decided to use the voice recorder to figure out what was going on. I captured the voice of a young boy. My client's children are all girls. After asking some questions, it sounded like he said, need to be careful. Oh my God, I've got shivers. I tried to ask more questions, but I was so tired. Out of the corner of my eye, in the reflection of a large picture frame, I saw something move. Oh no. I also heard the movement and turned to look. I couldn't see anything in front of me, but I swear to God, I could see my uncle, who had passed a few years prior, reflection in the glass in the picture frame. Then I heard him say, you can't go to sleep. Now I've genuinely got like goosebumps right now. 
I'm a paranormal investigator. Not a lot freaks me out, but I'd never experienced this kind of activity before. It was close to 2 a.m. at this point and almost three hours of constant unexplained activity. I decided I'd had enough and I walked over to the nightstand, grabbed the remote to arm the security system, pushed the button to arm it and thought, this is crazy. I need to just try and get some sleep. I had to be up in a few hours to get the girls ready for school. I stuck my knee on the bed and at the exact moment, someone kicked in the back door to the house, which was located in the kitchen and the security system went off. It was extremely loud and the lights were flashing all over the outside of the house. I grabbed my phone and ran towards the door. I didn't see anyone and dialed 911. One of my biggest fears is someone breaking in. Yeah, same. And as I was on the phone, I was checking to make sure everyone was all right and there wasn't anyone actually in the house. My cousin called because the security system company had called him because of the alarm being triggered and he had told them it was probably an accident. I told him to call them back. Someone just kicked your back door in and I'm not turning this alarm system off until the police get here. We never found out who tried to break into the house, but you cannot convince me that all the paranormal activity I experienced that night was not a warning about what was going to happen that night. It was truly as if they were purposely doing things to get my attention so I wouldn't forget to set that alarm by keeping me awake. I'm not really afraid of the paranormal. It's the living I tend to worry about. And this is a perfect example of that. Wow, that is like pfft, that is so so like, insane like first of all had you have gone to sleep someone would have just kicked the back door in and you wouldn't have even been like aware like conscious of like you know like when you wake up in that like daisy state oh my god so scary oh i've genuinely got like chills okay i feel like that was a really really good one to end on i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did, please leave a like because it really, really does help me out. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new around here because I'm really trying to hit 700 subscribers before my birthday and we're so, so close. And if you made it to the end of the video, I feel like we've just got to comment the ghost emoji today because, yeah, <laughs> the ghost emoji. Um, but yeah, with all that being said, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Genuine chills the hell. Thank you.